Page eight, the swallow, or that other thing, that law, whatever it is, you can pronounce that. Three, four time, this has one sharp in the key signature. We're in the key of G major. Make sure you can do the scale for G major. Let's take it one hand at a time. Now these little notes, just pretend they're the same size as the other notes. So treat them all the same right now. I'll, I'll talk about the little notes later. In the right hand, you're here. We're coming in on beat three. Three, one, two, and then it's a four. Just come across. You can let go of that. And you hold that down for five counts, and then go on. And then come up three. And then going on. Pivot on. This is the second line, third measure. Pivot on the thumb and come across. Here. And then come, lift up and come down. Do that again. And then lift up. Now, the last two measures of page eight. You're here, and they want you to use two and four again. They're going to slide off both keys here. And then they want you to use three and five again. Yeah. This sliding off is a kind of important way to, you need to be able to do it. It's hard to do with even one finger because you have to time it just right. You have to slide off at the right time and that's hard to do. It takes practice to be able to do that. However, another fingering might make it a little easier for you. So in the in the uh, second measure of that line, this is the third line on page eight, second measure here. So you're going to lift up anyway and move. So if you want to do a, a one four here and then a two three and then a three five, I don't have to slide off. And this kind of fingering is very common. It'll come in handy if you want to try it. And then and then they want you to come 3-5 again. You don't have to. I mean, you, you're here. You, you can do it here and then here. You got to use second finger again. Whichever. You decide on the fingering where your teacher will help you. So, and that's it. And then going on. This is page 9, second measure. It's 4, 1-4, one, 1-5. One, We're connecting the melody. That, we're protecting it. The thumb covers the other part. This is common too, so try that if you can. Then we're going to do that again. You've had this before. Going on, second line, second measure, here, and then come up. And this fun, third line, second measure is here. And then three, five. And then two, one. Now for the third line, in the second measure, you're here, and then a, a five, a three five, and then for the next measure, I suggest you do a four two or two four. Just leave this down and come down here, here, and then you can do a two one a little more easily. You're not moving around so much. And then going on, we got this thing again, but here you don't have to slide off. At the bottom, you, you can do that, and then 3-5 again, and then come down, connect that. They're saying 2-5, and you can do that too if your hands are big enough. Otherwise, a 1-5 is fine. That's a little tricky. So work out the fingering there, and, and get it to where it's sort of comfortable, because now we add these broken chords in the left hand, but here. It's third finger here. We're in this position. Here. And you're doing this forever. In fact, you're doing it all the way through the whole piece until the bottom of page nine. The last two measures, you're here. Cross over. Or if you don't want to cross over, you don't have to, because I can go here. One and then two. standard fingering too. Then put the hands together. Let's 
go down to the third line on page eight, you hear. I hope just work out the two hands together. You just got quarter notes that will keep the beat for you in the left hand. Then we can add in the articulation as best we can. You try and connect it as best you can with the hands. You can't. And lift up between. Lift up. Just do the best you can to connect. And the left hand is just a boom, chop, chop, chop. And then dynamic wise, well, softly P for soft and then expressivo, well, that comes later. Right now we're just trying to get it worked out mechanically. You can be expressive once you get to know it. So, so. Uh, okay, this is where the little notes come in. You're going to love it. They talk about it, bring out the notes. I, I say bring out the melody in my videos. It simply means we want to hear the melody. The melody is what everything is about. It's the melody. Everything else is there just to support it. So we have to develop the control in piano playing of how loud we're playing each note, even when we're playing multiple notes at the same time. That gets fun. It takes a while. You have to be patient with yourself, but you keep trying and it eventually comes. One of the things you can do in, when practicing scales is practice playing one hand louder than the other, and then take turns as to which hand is loud. That gives you a little bit of idea of more weight on one hand than the other, and so forth. Because I play by weight, so I'd simply put more weight on the note if I want it to be louder. We want the melody. The little notes here, there's different ways of interpreting little notes in music, so we have to be careful. In some cases, the little notes are considered optional. You don't have to play them. You can leave them out. Here, what they've done is they, they, they want to point out exactly where the melody is, because they want you to bring out the melody. So they put all the harmony notes in the right hand in little notes, and the melody notes in the regular size notes, so you know which is the melody. And that's the only reason we have little notes here. So here... Can you play the G louder than the B? You put more weight on that finger. However you finger it, just try, try and bring out, and that takes time to develop that. The left hand, you just keep it soft all the time. So. So at the beginning, it's softly in the melody. Everything else is very soft. And then in the second line, you go up to moderately soft. Don't get up too loud. Uh, up here, and then come down. Down, back down. At the end of the page, you go back up to moderately soft again. You have to get to know it well enough that you can feel these dynamics. You feel these swells. On page nine, you got more crescendos, more arrows to come up and come back down. You don't get really loud here. The the most, if you would be sort of a moderately loud, but I recommend staying in the soft area throughout this whole piece. And the left has to be just stay very soft all the time. That's tricky. This is a hard piece. So let's make it harder. Well, they've added pedal. Isn't that nice? Well, we sort of need pedal because we need some help in connecting this melody together. So they're doing overlapping pedal and you're just changing it on each measure. Well, if I do it that way, this is what it sounds like. Push the notes down first and then the pedal. I'm going to change the pedal after I play the notes each time.
you like that sound and you're fine with it, go with it. That's good enough. Now I don't really, I mean this is a really tough piece figuring wise. This isn't really piano music. So I'm tempted to leave the pedal pretty much like it is. Now there is a couple styles with a waltz type pedaling. A 3-4 is a waltz type pens. One, two, three, one, two, three. Where you can get a, maybe just pedal the first beat or the first two beats of each measure. Well if I pedal just the first beat of each measure, I, I get this. It's still a little choppy. Well, if I pedal the first two beats of each measure and lift up on the third beat, I get this. Something like that doesn't sound too bad, not too blurry. At the end, the last couple measures, once I hit that E, I don't need to pedal anymore. This way it's clean and I'm dying away. That's all. And I, I would recommend that. So don't pedal the last two measures. So I would recommend pedaling the first two beats of each measure and then lifting up on the third beat each time. Speed wise, Andante Cantabile. Andante is kind of a leisurely stroll type speed. It's not slow, it's just leisurely. Cantabile is a singing style, so it's... It's up to you. There's no set speed on it. It's in that area someplace. Now I understand the speed isn't the speed of the beat. It's the overall feel of the piece. You want to... The beat is going to go however fast it's got to go to support the flow of the piece. So it may, the beat wise you may think, well that's not, um, that's not Andante, that's getting up there. One, two, three, one, two, three, that's pretty quick. Now it's the feel of it, it's not that bad. So, for, so it's the feel of it that you need to go after on tempo. I like to play it with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the dynamics. I'll try and do the paneling as I suggested, just the first two beats of each measure for the most part. So I'll give us two casts because we come in on beat three. I'm going to go ready and go and then we go. Ready, go. One, two. 